Hi everyone, this is Axel with Sherwin Williams Exports. Today I'm here with Lonnie Rossell and Dave Myers from Diamond Rush. We're going to be talking about how to uh, surf, how to do a surface prep before applying an epoxy coating in the floor. Today we're going to be using the HNC epoxy garage floor coating, and we're going to be having Dave doing the surface prep, and then we're going to be having uh, Lonnie doing the application. Thank you. How you got everyone? I'm here with Dave now that he's going to be talking and walking us through uh, around the equipment that is going to be needed and the step-by-step -step on how to do the proper surface prep. Dave, you want to take it over? Absolutely. My name is Dave Myers. I'm from Diamond Brush. Basically what we're going to show you today is how to prep your floor properly so that your coating is going to stick to it and adhere to it properly. Uh, it's going to make it last a lot longer for you. It's going to work a lot better for you. Basic tools I have here is we have a diamond brush uh, tool that goes on an angle grinder. We've got these in both a four inch and a seven inch. So you can cut a couple different sizes. That works great for all the little corners and areas you can't get your bigger machinery to. Uh, uh, a swing buffer, like the one we have back here, uh, we've got a tool for that. Is again a stacked diamond blade system. Takes a nice little light, uh, gives you a proper profile on your floor. And then we also have what we call a walk behind machine. Uh, that one actually uses a double system of this, so that'll speed up the process a little bit. Any of these tools will work to prepare your floor. We're going to show you right now basically how we use the tools to prep your floor with the buffing machine here. Uh, we've got the tool on the machine, we've got it hooked up to a back, and we want to put a little bit of water down just for gut dust control and to basically keep the blades cool is all we're looking. So we don't need a lot, but just spray a little bit of water down on there so you got something to cool that off. Now I'm going to turn the back on and run the basically how to run the hand tool. The reason we've run this is you can get real nice and close to all your edges, all your little tight spots. We've actually got a hot water heater to go around and that kind of thing so you can get into those little edges. Just like the floor buffer, uh, we've got it hooked up to a vacuum and it does kick off a little bit of dust so we want to be safe, wear some uh, safety glasses and a mask, but we'll show you how that goes. Okay, at this point, we've gone around all your edges with the hand tool, gotten all, all those ready. Uh, you can either go to your buffing machine to do the rest of the floor, or you can go, if you have the availability, a machine like this. This actually puts down water, it has its own vacuum system, and it's a two-disc system. So if you've got larger areas, this is a good way to go. Uh, we also make tools for the ride-on style, or just about any cleaning machine that's got some decent down pressure, we've got tools for you. But uh, we're going to go ahead and hit this little, little bit with this and show you how that works. Basically, we just made one quick pass around here just to kind of show you what it does. We're starting to get that profile on there. Uh, it makes it nice because it vacuums up your water and your dust and everything else. But uh, a couple passes and we'll get that right where you want. Okay, in the tools that we use, and this is for the buffer or a walk behind machine or a ride on, uh, we've got all different types of grits, just like grits of sandpaper different grits. We were running the 100 grit on the machine a minute ago. We're going to try the 25 grit on and see what it looks like. Guys, now that all the 
surface prep has been completed, the floor has been grinded, it has been cleaned, and the profile that we needed to apply the product is ready to go. Um, we're, we're done. Uh, we want to thank uh, Dave for everything. He brought the equipment. He uh, did all the necessary steps to get uh, this done. Uh, Dave, is there anything in, uh, you want to share with us? No, I just want to say thanks for letting me come be a part of this. If you guys are interested in any of the tools, uh, we also have polishing for concrete polishing tools, uh, coatings removal for wood, and coatings removal for concrete as well. Just go to diamondbrush.com. We got several uh, instructional videos and lots of information on there. So anything you need, just let us know. Awesome. I want to thank you guys. We're going to uh, be putting a link in this uh, same video and the website so you can find all the information you need from Diamond Brush and Dave. Thank you all. Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm here with Lonnie uh, from HNC. Now that uh, the floor has been prepped and everything is uh, almost ready to go, Lonnie, uh, what uh, else do we need to do? What is the next step? So basically we've got, we've got the floor profile, which we did with Dave yesterday. So we took the grinder and we took all the slickness off the floor so we have a profile for the coating to stick. But we do have a lot of cracks. If you look at these cracks over here, what I did uh, this morning is I, uh, is I took a, uh, a wheel and I ground it out just to give myself a little space to apply a crack filler. The crack filler I recommend when we have a crack like this is the, uh, the Miracle Bond crack filler, um, which is a two component epoxy crack filler. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill those, uh, those cracks with this material. And then afterwards, we're gonna take some shark grip, which is kind of like an anti-slip additive, and we're gonna broadcast that into, the, uh, into this crack filler product so that we have that profile for the coating to adhere to it. All right, so today we're going to install Shieldcrete uh, Garage Epoxy, uh, which is uh, it's it's been a product that's been around, but we've done some uh, we've done some updates to it. So number one, it's tintable now, where it wasn't tintable before. Um, so now you can tint it to more than over a thousand colors. It's water-based, so it goes on really easy. It has a lot more open time. So actually, you know, our our former. Um, uh, formulation actually you know you, you had to work with somebody else to get it down but this gives you a lot more open time so somebody that's a pretty decent painter can actually um, do this job all by themselves so uh, some of the things that you're going to need obviously before you start you want to clean and degrease your floor uh, you want to use the agency cleaner degreaser you want to clean all the grease and oil and stuff off the floor before you actually grind or do any kind of the acid washing you don't want to make that stuff go down into the floor. So yesterday we, uh, we, we ground the floor. Uh, we also installed our joints down here. If you take a look down, you, uh, we repaired some of those cracks. So we got that all fixed. In repairing the cracks, we broadcasted some sharp grip, which is an anti-slip additive, but we needed to create some profile for the shield creek to actually adhere to. Uh, some of the tools that you can need, obviously gonna be a paintbrush, a roller cover. I always recommend that you have a, a blower so you can blow off whatever sand or dirt might be uh, in the garage, a vacuum to vacuum up any kind of residue, and a drill with a mixing pad. So with that being said, I'm going to, uh, we're going to mix up the products. I'm going to show you how to mix the products so that you don't have any problems in the future, and we're going to do that now. Um, so we, we open the box, we're going to see what we have inside. So we have, we have some cleaner degreaser in here. So you can actually use what's in the, uh, in the package, just read the directions. <clears throat> we also have instructions. Please don't throw these away, refer to these before you start the job. We have our part B, which is a catalyst. We have our part A, which is a killer. And then we have our stir stick. 
Since we're going to be working with more than one kit, we're going to use a drill. So we don't need that stirrer stick. We can save that for a future project. We already cleaned the floor, so we don't need any of the cleaner degreaser. And we don't need the directions anymore. So there's that. Um, so typically, when you're going to mix your product up, you always want to mix each, each part by itself. So we're going to mix the uh, part B by itself. And now we're going to mix the part A's by themselves. And the, re the reason why we mix these things individually is because many times, you know, the, the product settles on the bottom and, uh, and you want to make sure you get all of that stuff off the bottom so it mixes correctly. So I'm going to spin this real quick. So we've got that mixed up. And now we're going to mix up the uh, RP since that drill won't fit inside here. We're going to mix this one by hand just to make sure we have nothing in the bottom. Each one of these kits gets you about 250 square feet to the gallon. We've got about 400 square foot uh, garage floor here. We've got a clean bucket with a bucket grip. I'm going to take it apart A. I'm going to pour that in the, uh, in the bucket. So if you had a really small project to do that you didn't need the whole gallon, the mixture is uh, three parts of part A to one part of part B. So just so you have that formulation. So if you use three ounces of part A, how many ounces of part B would you need? One. Very good. All right. <laughs> now we're going to take our drill and we're going to mix it all together.
All right, Lonnie, now that the epoxy has been applied, the flags have been broadcast, what are we doing next? How are we going to protect the floor? So, of course, you, you always have to protect the floor with some kind of a sealer because your flakes are kind of exposed or glued down to the epoxy. We applied them to the epoxy wall. The epoxy was wet, so now we have to encapsulate it. We encapsulate with a sealer. The sealer that we're going to use is the uh, High Performance Industrial Clear from h &C. Looks like we're all done. That's it, that's our sealer.